okay so uh, what we saw before the break was that the router gives us two basic mechanisms one is a selection selecting one across many options and the other is nesting where it will uh, you know, join different parts of the paths uh, and uh, is able to combine uh, the different elements uh, thanks to the outlet uh, say container hmm? um, there are other details uh, special routes that uh, can be useful for rendering uh, special parts of the uh, or for matching special uh, special cases for example we have uh, instead of uh, um, say instead of defining a path element we can just use the index keyword this is sort of a default value uh, for for the path so uh, if we have a set of uh, like we have here uh, a set of alternatives for which the first one the, those alternatives are in sort of mounted inside inside the slash instead of some path then we have different uh, child uh, possible children and uh, all the children have something to add to the URL but some of them don't have anything to add so in this case the more explicit uh, uh, version would be to use the index saying okay this is the default route if no more specific route will match then use this one okay so uh, it will match only the name of the of the containing folder in a way okay um, this the sentence here is strange it says a route with no path that renders in the parents outlet at the parents url uh, it means that actually uh, this uh, doesn't have any path by itself but it will reuse the path of the parent okay so when before when i wrote pet equal to the empty string i was not so sure <laughs> it would have worked because it was a say, special case usually this the, this the index keyword that uh, is uh, designed for this purpose okay the home we have here and then the other was about uh, is work is still working okay usually when we have a set of uh, let's say real children pages and one main page we can call it as index uh, and it doesn't need any additional path uh, to add in, the, in, the, in this case, actually, when we, have, when we are at this path, there are two components rendering, layout and this element, hmm? at the same URL. So this is the first uh, special case. Then we have a, a second special case, which is a, a pure layout route. Okay, right now we use the, uh, this layout component here uh with a with a special path but if we want this component this layout uh, to be applied to all the routes uh, we could just uh, forget about the route content and uh, use it like that so it's possible, okay, for an element not to have any path specified. In this case, this component will not participate in the matching and will always be rendered. Of course, it, of course it's a con if uh, uh, what it does is that it will, uh, let's say, delegate to the lower routes to do the matching and the result will be into the outlet. So uh, right now this uh, path equal to slash is a bit of redundant for having the layout. What I could do is just to, uh, for example, have one route for the layout without any path. And then nest everything else there. Uh, and I, I don't need the element here. I don't know if it's allowed. Okay, so I, I can I can separate 
one global layout to be applied always from different sections of the application. So this is the home page, say the home section, the default value of the home section, and the about uh, inside the home section. And all of them will uh, apply this layout. Okay, so like, like before, slash, about, and so on. Then I may have uh, another section called, I don't know, help, so I can have another route, path equal to help, for example. Then may have its own sub-routes, nested routes, that are, of course, in compatible, disjoint with the previous ones, but all of them will always share the same layout. Okay, so I may have, uh, so I, in this case, I'm matching the URL without forcing an element. I can do that. Or if I want to force an element, that would be probably an element with an outlet that I want uh, um, maybe to, to include it. Huh? Um, so, okay, let's, for example, let's say we have a route uh, uh, index uh, element uh, equal to, uh, for example, a title, uh, a title um, help page, for example, here. And uh, route, uh, another route uh, with path uh, equal to, um, let's say, mm, index, no, the, the contents element equal to content list of the help section, whatever. Uh, I need to close these tags. Okay, so what do I have here? I have something that will render the root, will render the help, the about, will render the help section with the with the index page, and we render help slash content. Uh, if I can write it correctly. No, it's not content, it's uh, contents. No, they will render a subsection inside another one. Right now, all of them share the same layout component. If I want, I can apply a different layout to the help session by creating another layout component with no path that will just apply and rewrite uh, that, part, that, that portion. Okay, so. I'm nesting layouts and components uh, and declaring in a way what is the navigation structure of my application. So for applications that are not too complex, uh, we can have all the paths declared in the, in the app and uh, the declaration of the path will decide which components to render in which case. And then the component will be just uh, inserted and uh, dropped in and out uh, according to the, to the current path. Okay. There is a, another case, which is uh, uh, another, the third special case with a, a, a path with just an asterisk. So not a, not, it's not like here where we have a, an asterisk as part of a larger path, it's just an asterisk by itself. It means if nothing else is matching, then I will. It's not the same as uh, index. Index uh, only matches if there is nothing more. Asterisk uh, match, uh, matches if uh, there is something more, but none of the options are valid. None of the options will match. So it will gather when we are, uh, say, topic one. When we write topic one, we not render anything. Okay, so maybe we want to render talk, the topic doesn't exist or something like that, an error message, not uh, 
we want to mess something that is not one of the available uh, available options hmm? and uh, uh, in this case we can add another route with a special path asterisk element uh, h2 whatever it is invalid topic so that we will never have a, have a blank page yes I need to close it okay so if we have the contents page it's okay if we write anything else uh, we'll go to this uh, default page and if we don't have anything we go to the index page so we have, have index page children pages or default pages which is one possible children when no one possible child when, when no other children are matching okay uh, these are uh, possibility for the routes uh, and this uh, example is sort of uh, combining all of them but right now we can only render one page at a time how to move across pages well it's very easy we just use uh, a component or a hook to navigate across pages we have the link component that will create uh, a link which is understood by the router this will generate an a link i could also generate an a by, by myself but i don't want to for example uh, in this component uh, oh i need something more for example in the layout okay i could have some menu for navigating across the website so for example, I could have uh, just a list, uh, something very ugly to see. Uh, sorry, a uh, list item. I could have uh, maybe the about. And uh, uh, help. Okay. So if I'm putting that in the layout, uh, it will be always present here. I want the about to be a link to the about page. I could do it in the old way, old fashioned way, with just a link a href equal to slash about. But we don't do it here. So this is working. Okay, it creates a link. And uh, if you click on the link, uh, it will go to the About page. But keep an eye on the Network tab. It's reloading the application. So if we had any state, it will be lost in this moment. So we want to have the effect of a link, which is the effect of changing the URL without losing the application, without loading a new page. Okay? And this is done by using not a uh, link A, the, uh, but a link component from the router. A link component has an attribute which is called to, not href, that does the same thing. It, it, it will render an A inside, but it will modify the behavior of the link to change it, the URL without loading the page. A link. No, W, okay. So in this case, let's go back to the home page. We have this link. It's still, if we inspect the HTML itself, it is an A, but the event handler has been captured by the router. And when we click on it, we go to the network tab, the URL changed, but you see that there was no network request there. So it only changed the knowledge of the browser about the URL. And by the way, when it did that, it updated the history. So I can go back to the previous page. So moving with the link component will update the URL, recompute the routes, and update the history for free. 
Um, so we always use link to move across the different sections. Also here, we want to link to help. Uh, again, slash link. And so we can move across the different pages. The URL changes and the history is populated uh, with the different objects we, we went through. Just remember, we never use uh, plain links uh, or we never use uh, the form submission mechanism uh, directly because they will re re uh, reload the page. Okay, also for, sub for submission, uh, uh, already last week we saw that we had to prevent the default behavior of the form uh, in order to be able to process the data and not uh, being killed <laughs> um, by, by, by the submission itself. Um, so the link is useful if you are going to create some static link in the page, but what if we want to create some, for example, buttons or other type of actions that will trigger a navigation? Then we can use the use navigate hook. Okay, so, if I want to render a link, okay, but if I want to render some button, for example, here, maybe I want to have some bootstrap button which are nicer to see or something like that. So I can do that, and so I, but I need to trigger navigation from an event handler. Okay, so let's imagine we are also replicating this as a set of buttons. Uh, for example, value equal to about. Okay, it should display. No, sorry, it's not the value attribute, but it's the. I always forget about. It's the body. Okay, we have this about button. And if I want to click it, uh, it should go somewhere hmm? to the about page. So we don't, we should associate an action to the on click event. And this action, when clicked, so always as a callback as an action, it should navigate to a new URL. We can call then a function called navigate that is a function given us by the hook use navigate. So we just retrieve a function called navigate from the hook use navigate. Of course, use navigate must be imported. And here we call navigate with the URL where, where we want to go. Help. Previously, we would have used this location here to set a state. The mod, mod edit, mod help, or whatever. Instead of setting a state variable, which is something that we manage ourselves, we set the location. We use the location, the navigation location, as a a reminder for where the application should be. Hmm? So in this case, I'm here, I click on about, and nothing happens, why? Uh, button click, uh, uh, sorry, because I navigated to help. So it is happening, but <laughs> not in the right position. Okay, and it goes to about. So the ways for moving from a route to a different out, a route from a page to a different page. Right now, no, we are calling routes and pages uh, in uh, interchangeably. Uh, it's uh, there are two these two ways, okay, the link component or the navigate function. Okay, uh, so we 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 change the location with link or navigate, or, and we match the location with the route. 
by combining these two mechanisms we can create the structure the navigation structure of our uh, application hmm. um, by the way of course the navigate is a normal function so you can you could also navigate to address the urls that are composed dynamically for example you want to go to a the other list of uh, your invoices you want to go to a specific one so you create you create a, a router called invoices slash the number of the invoice that can be passed as a parameter you don't even need to store this number in a state somewhere because it's already uh, in the location so it's already accessible uh, the other uh, information is that all the paths uh, for navigating a relative unless they start with a slash and this is useful because uh, right now for example we are we may navigate across the different section of the help say, um, group of pages by only navigating uh, uh, across uh, um, by only showing the relative path of the cell huh? so if there are many sections uh, help uh, contents help topics and so on we just navigate to context to topics without writing all the full path and so it's even easier because the same uh, part is, re is relocated to a different part of the, web of the website because maybe it's not longer help, but it's uh, user support slash help. If you are using relative paths inside, inside the same group of routes, uh, it will be, say, moved uh, uh, without any, any special effort. Okay, Just we should try to think uh, every group of routes uh, as a section of the website uh, which is decomposed in a, in a set of possible subsections that are decomposed in a set of possible pages and so on hmm? um, uh, always about navigation uh, we one thing we would like to have is uh, a way to so to highlight uh, these different voices so uh, if I am in about uh, I would like this button to be of a different color for example than the other one uh, that I know what is the section in which I am so this can be done with another with a variant of the link component which is called navigation link so navigation link uh, is a link that is in, so in a way aware of the current state, the current location. It will use the current location to uh, understand among all the diff all the possible links if it is the one that is being selected. Okay? And how does it do that? Well, there's one basic behavior, it adds an active class to render a link. What does it mean? This is a link, the normal A link. If we render a nav link, one of the two will have a class automatically added called active class equal to active so we can use style sheets just to customize the appearance of an active one for example first of all we, we must transform these links into navigation link of course not all of them should be navigation links no? internal links from moving to from page to page should just be plain links but in this case, we have this say, sort of a menu here. Now, they are nav links. They behave in the same way as before. But if I go and inspect the component, I see that this link, if I click on about, it, it gets a new class active. If I click on help, the about uh, uh, link doesn't have the active class anymore so I could use style sheets uh, to, to transform the link uh, the active link into something different changing the color making bold or whatever okay um, for example uh, let's take the app style sheets and make it that so that the a dot active Let's make it, uh, I don't know, bold, font, uh, weight, bold. OK. 
okay so right now i'm transforming all the links but i uh, should probably only select the ones that i need i need to import also the css up of css so that it will be loaded into the page and right now what you see is that the selected link is highlighted to, thanks to css okay so the class is applied automatically by navlink and the, F, the visual effect uh, is applied by the css this is all of course it's a very basic mechanism that only works uh, when i want to change the the, the appearance of a link uh, there are other possibility uh, we can just if we want to change maybe we already have some classes available uh, which are not called active and so we can uh, the another link has two extra attributes one is called class name and the other is class uh, it's, it's called style that expect a callback function and this callback function receives a boolean value is active or not so we may have a class name with a callback function that will return the name of the class to apply only if uh, it's selected for example i would write something like uh, in the nav link uh, class name it needs a callback function uh with uh, the executive and then i i will uh, return an expression whether is active then uh, i return uh, active button for example otherwise nothing so it's a question mark here something like that so i want to apply a specific class or set of classes to um, to a, an active link and uh, i have this i can specify the class name in a dynamic way or the style in a dynamic way if i want to apply directly the css attributes so we receive a style object an object with all the key and attributes for the css Mm -hmm. um, okay, there are just ways of uh, customizing that. If we, if it's not enough, okay, let's not use navlink. Uh, use routes. You could do the, a, a, a route matching about uh, that will render uh, you know, a button with some specific property, and otherwise it will render a different button. Okay, in the default, you will render a different button. So if we want to really change radically the, the behavior according to the to the, um, the path, uh, of course, you need use routes uh, to select which component. But for the uh, small uh, um, details, small um, changes to the to the highlight uh, of, of the elements, uh, this is usually enough. Hmm? Okay, we didn't uh, mention uh how to deal with the dynamic routes okay dynamic routes are routes where some parts of the url are parametric are param parameters that we can set so we can group into a single route many different actual specific routes by changing maybe typically it will be an id or a, or a name that will uh, specify an element across a list of elements and the matching this is easy there's nothing special to do we just specify a segment uh, with a, a semicolon here so for example we had uh, our help section so we want to have uh, some urls uh, for the help about any specific topic okay so we may add uh, a section here where is the help here uh, a route 
path is held, held by topic slash topic ID, topic name, whatever you want. Element equal to, okay, so let's make a specific element because it will be long. Element equal to um, help by topic. Okay, so this will match all the routes starting with topic slash something. Uh, so the help by topic function help by topic okay, is a normal component that we want to return For example, something like uh, help by topic, and then what is the topic? We, of course, need to access the actual value that was given in this path to retrieve this value. So the path is a topic slash anything. But the, um, the actual value may be or is needed by the component. And the component may access this value through a hook, which is called use param. Use param. So use params. Use parameters. Not count. Const. Uh, params. Parameters is uh, use params imported by React Router DOM. Pa the params are uh, a list of, uh, it's an object uh, with some properties, properties corresponding to the different dynamic uh, parameters. Uh, I, I'm talking plural because a URL may be long and may have different dynamic segments. So all the dynamic segments will create an attribute in this object. Right now we only have one which is called topic name. So we can use it, this topic name here. Uh, params dot topic name. Of course, we can do anything with this information. We can look up in a database or whatever. We have this information. So we can customize this page with this information. Uh, so in this case, uh, okay, you go to help. Uh, we don't have the link, so I'll put it by hand. Topic uh, React. And right now it reloaded because it just wrote the, the URL myself. But you see that it extracted from the, it meshed, help, topic, reactor. So it concatenated all the segments. And uh, the last segment was a the dynamic part that was put into the, uh, the property of the object. Okay, and so we, are, we may use this information in there. So I'm imagining, for example, when you have the edit functionality, so you can go to a route called edit slash ID of the course. So there you have the information about which course you want to edit. And then once you have the information about the ID, you can retrieve all the information you want, of course, by, with a callback from, from the parent or whatever. Okay. Um, so this is, is powerful because it lets the user create very complex uh, paths, but also since this React can be, this URL can be created by a navigate function, and this navigate function may create you know, the, this string uh, uh, dynamically, uh, then we can you know, uh, 
create a list of items and then clicking on an item, navigating to the page with detail where we are passing this information. Uh, right now, it was not easy to pass information. When I click on a button, I, I need to give the information about which button to press to another component. So if that component was my child, okay, because it passes a prop. But is, if the information is needed by someone else, I need to set a state above uh, in order to be retrieved there. With this mechanism, uh, the state or the information is just encoded into the location. Okay, so if we if we get it right, uh, it's, uh, it, it will simplify a lot uh, the management of these intermediate states uh, and also the passage of information from one page to another. Um, okay. So, yeah, this is just an example of the same. Uh, by the way, if we already know in this case that uh, which is the parameter that we want instead of extracting the params object and then doing params dot invoice id we can always use the destructuring assignment uh, which is always valid where we already extract uh, some property of an object and so we have it as uh, available as a variable which is usually more uh, convenient there's another mechanism uh, in addition to the, to the dynamic, uh, to constructing a dynamic route for passing information from one page to another. Um, I mention it because it's there, but I would try to avoid it uh, uh, if possible, because it doesn't add a lot uh, to the current one. Uh, actually, what happens is that uh, uh, is uh, say something which, which is a bit hidden every location also in the browser has an associated state value which i don't know why it's there but it's there anyway so we can write and read it's an attribute of the location location.state is uh, an object in the bom remember the bom and dom we saw at the beginning the bom is the browser object model so the object uh, made available, the objects made available by the browser. Location is one of these, window the location. Location has a sub property which is called state, okay? Um, so what you could do is when you navigate, you are creating a new location object and you can attach a state to this location object. And this state will be available, can be queried by the receiving page. So for example, when you use navigate, you send the first parameter is the address, of course, but you can pass a second parameter, an object with an attribute state and some data. In the other page, so in the destination of the navigation function, you can use the hook use location to retrieve the location object, and of course, accessing the state attribute of this location so the next page can retrieve the user data that was set in the previous page if this user data is just you know a string the effect is the same as adding a dynamic segment to the url i could have url plus user data slash user data and then here I retrieve this user data from use params like we did before. With the additional uh, result is that this URL is visible and so if I want to bookmark it, if I if want to, uh, it remains in the history so I can go back to that specific content, to that specific user data. Uh, if I'm putting that into the state, uh, it will be somewhere, somehow less accessible uh, by the browser. Uh, but the other problem is that, uh, uh, I think the major problem is that uh, this syntax leads you to believe that user data is an object that can be sent and retrieved and extracted. And it is an object, but not really. Because the internal mechanism in the browser to uh, store this state location is to serialize that into a string. 
So the browser is actually storing a string. If user data is not a string but an object, it will be first converted to a string, and then here the string will be reconverted to an object, which is fine unless you have a complex object. So something that contains a date, a DJS, or an exam object, or something like that. What you will get here will be an object with the right properties, but it will not be an object of that type. So you, don't have, you, will, you will not have all the methods available, only the values, only the properties. Because you cannot serialize into a string, you cannot serialize functions, only values. So this is a mechanism which is limited by the capability of the browser. Uh, that this state is needs to be serialized as a string so you cannot reconstruct real objects so if you want you can use it to pass simple objects meaning object that contains only numbers or strings or other or other nested objects but no complex objects you will lose the information about the object no methods no functional properties uh, or just strings simple values that's the reason, well, this I think this limitation is the main reason why I would prefer probably, if I need to pass a string, I pass it in the location ID, in the, in the dynamic location instead of the, um, in this uh, state. Hmm? It gives you the illusion of handling object, but it doesn't really. Okay. Uh, there's also another way, another mechanism for passing information which is the query string, query search parameter. So a URL contains a set of segments. Some of them may be dynamic, okay. And then you may have a question mark and a set of parameters. So can the router access and use those parameters to customize the page? Of course it can. And there is another hook called the search parameters that will allow you to read and modify these parameters here. Uh, it's a bit, uh, again, it's not very easy to use, uh, but it, it may be used if you have uh, some queries like this. Of course, the, 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 the matching of the router we only works on the part before the question mark. Okay, the router only filters and decides about the URL, not the search parameters. But then when you are in the page, you can query these parameters if you want. You, you just have to call the hook called user search parameters. That will give you one variable and one setter function. Like you state more or less. The variable search parameter is not an, a simple object. Is an object of type uh, URL dot search parameter, which is a predefined object in the browser object model. And uh, the documentation about this object is not in React; it's something uh, native in the browser, so you can see it uh, directly on MDN. And uh, basically, you can uh, you cannot write a search parameter dot sort or dot filter, but you must use a, a method called get. To, to, because it's not a real object, it's just um, uh, something that can be queried, no? a data structure that can be queried. If you want to see the methods that are available, you must go to this object. So that's why it's not so mm, easy to use, because you need to, uh, to query it, uh, and it's a, it's a map, basically. Mm? It's a map data structure, and you can only, uh, say, uh, use it with map-like map methods. But, of course, if you want, uh, you can, of course, extract these parameters with this uh, uh, hook. And if you want to change these parameters, which is a strange notion, why should I want to change some search parameter? Because I want to run, uh, run a new search. Of course, I'm not changing the parameter for me. I change the parameter for another page that will be then recomputed, recompute some results. So constructing a URL with a different set of parameters can be done by just calling set search parameters with an object, with an object, key value pairs with the, so it will be an object with sort, uh, uh, column date and filter, column valid and so on. You call the set, it will create and uh, uh, it will replace 
the current parameter without changing the location. So you are not building a new URL from scratch, you are keeping the location. And so in a way you are keeping the routes, they will always be the same so route selected, but you are changing the, the parameters so that you can you know, customize, uh, uh, maybe you want to change the sort order, so sorting from by date or sorting by score or by name, you can do that by recreating an object. Uh, and then the page, of course, will, will recompute. But the location will be the same, so you, you'll be sure that uh, you don't move the page. Hmm? It's a, it's a, uh, a detail, a, a corner case, when you want to have some functionality that depends on the query parameters and not on the dynamic part of the page. Hmm? There are many options. It depends on how you want to, to manage that part. Okay? Uh, you may also, by the way, the sorting of a table may normally be done with a state inside the page okay we don't need to use the location for everything now, now that we learn the router we don't need to use the router for everything okay it's, bet it's better to use the router for what is doing best uh, organizing the main navigation of the website do you have a question yeah yes So in the case of the filters, I would probably use a dynamic uh, parameter, uh, like uh, show movie slash field slash uh, and the name of the filter, probably. Um, well, it, well, actually, it depends. If uh, all the filters actually behave in the same identical way, it would be maybe better to have only one route for all of them, and then the parameter that only is only queried inside. But also here, you see that uh, we only have one component, and then inside it we can do different things. So they are very similar. Mm. They are very similar. So this, uh, uh, the capability of, of changing the search parameter is mm, probably more complicated than it needs. If I want to change the filter, I just have to navigate to the new URL with the filter name. I will try, as a general rule, to keep it simple. So state, router, dynamic so routes, dynamic routes, uh, query parameter. There, there are an increasing level of complexity. So let's move to the next level of complexity only if we need it. Hmm? If we can do it with a simpler way, why not? OK? It will be for our own health. Okay, um, I think that's all. Yeah, this, uh, this uh, I just put one final slide with a with summary of the <laughs> of the components and the hooks uh, that we uh, need to use uh, when we work uh, uh, with the router. I would spend uh, the last um, five or five or ten minutes, uh, ten more ten and five, um, in trying to think, not to code, which was before. Uh, think about, for example, our application with the exam scores, uh, uh, how it could be organized with, uh, with routes, okay? If we wanted to, right now we have a navigation based on, so let's go back to, to our other exams. All the navigation right now relies on the mod state, what is that? Here. And when we decided this mod, we decided there are some, there are some allowed values, uh, and then we uh, needed to add uh, some extra states, like the editing sum, uh, some extra functions, and so on. Okay? And right now, a lot of code uh, is highly dependent on these values. But if we had to start from scratch, and so let's say maybe to, to migrate uh, to a router, what could we do? So let's uh, maybe open a text file, uh, router routes.
okay thinking about uh, thinking about routes uh, for the exams so uh, we did an exercise like this uh, last week when we talked about uh, when we invented this mod state no? so what what are the pages that we want to the different pages that we want to show okay there should be a home page what does the home page show shows the list of exams it shows uh, no options no buttons for changing anything and it shows uh, the button for entering the modification the change mode right and we may have uh, another route maybe we call it change it just to keep the, the, the terminology when we have the list of exams with the button so a list of exams with the edit uh, delete and edit buttons then we have a button for add and then we have a button for entering the view mode and by the way we already can say what this button does the button for enter the change mode goes to the location navigates to change and the button for entering the view mode uh, uh, navigates uh, to slash okay so we are replacing everything we did with mod with route okay uh, what do we do with delete delete okay modifies the states and then stays in change no navigation deletes and just the row disappears but i'm still in the editing version if i want after delete to or delete to be one, a one shot option i click on delete and i go back to the view mode if, you, if i want and then the buttons will disappear i will decide it in designing the navigation while the uh, sorry the edit button it should uh, navigate it doesn't have anything to do right now it can modify the state because before we need the user to edit the form navigate to another state that can be edit id course uh, code exam code whatever so we have a route for editing when I click on edit we we'll just change the route and give the route the information about which exam to edit and of course if I click different edit buttons they will create different uh, URLs they will create different components so I have all the problems about the state of the component solved. Then I have uh, uh, right now, so I, I must have an edit uh, exam code route. And of course, a button for add, I navigate to add, for example. And so I have another route for add. 
So let's, let's do add because it's easier first. What do I want to show in add? I need to show the form for entering an exam. Empty. Empty. Default empty. And then this form has a button for cancel. And what does it do? Just navigate to change. A button for add, uh, add yeah, uh, change state, navigate to change. The nice part here is that the add button itself decides where to navigate. When the mode was uh, state above, uh, it was the component above that decides uh, the navigation that may not have all the information. And maybe here I can decide whether or not to show the list of exams. And I can decide whether or not to show the change mode button. Maybe not. I'm focused on the add form. So it's very easy. In this route, I will not put that component. And so it's only be the add, uh, the add um, form plus the layout, of course. Maybe we have some common layout. And the edit is actually the same. But the default is not empty, is uh, the, uh, the exam values corresponding to this uh, exam code. So it needs to get these values. So this co the form component only has the code and needs to get all the other values. We can do that in different ways. We can pass the state uh, to the, the, the exam list uh, to this component, or we can add uh, maybe a callback uh, that for finding you know, a search callback uh, for the component. Once we have the code, uh, it's easy to, to, to find the object, it's just uh, a find method on the, on the list, okay? A button for cancel will navigate to change, a button for save will change the state and navigate to change. So this, this will also tell us the difference between, we already know that this form for editing an exam and this form for entering an exam, asterisk, they are the same. So these two forms uh, maybe are the same form with the different uh, mode. Okay. So in this case, uh, with a different mode prop. So in this case, we can say, okay, you are the form for an exam, work in add mode and work or work in edit mode, like it's already doing. Now we see that there's a lot of functionality that we don't want to duplicate into two, into two different forms, so one for editing and the other for adding. So I will customize it with a, with a Boolean or with a uh, values that tells the form in which content is being used. And, uh, and so the structure can be just, uh, or the, or the application can be just realized with four different routes. And a lot of information, so all, uh, a lot of information about the mod, about the, the editing exam and so on, will not be needed anymore because it will be already embedded into the location. Okay, so of course today we don't have time to do that. We'll do that uh, um, next week or you can try that on your own. Uh, don't try to keep a lot of structure of the component. If you have to delete some component and rebuild it in a simpler way, don't be afraid to do that. Okay, the end result should be simpler. 
okay thank you and see you on thursday